Gemini 2.5 is amazing. I used it all day today. So my cost on APIs was zero. Now I did have to actually set up a billing account. I've done this a while ago on Google so I could use the Gemini 2.5 model because any of the model aggregators like Open Router Request here are just completely swapped. You can't actually get through to them. But regardless of that, the thing that I wanted to play around with today with this 1 million token context window and this 2 million coming soon has me like thinking, why would they do a 2 million token context window if the 1 million token context window didn't work good already? So that's what I'm going to test in this video. And before I do that, though, I just want to call out, I'm amazed at how quickly Gemini 2.5 Pro has hit the top of LM Arena. Typically, a new model comes out and it'll be just a couple points ahead or, you know, right at the top. But this model is significantly ahead the second place model, which seems to bounce between Grok 3 and GPT 4.0. This model is 35 points ahead of ChatGPT 4.0 latest, which it looks like they just did a snapshot yesterday. So they've got an update there, which is now ahead of Grok 3. So earlier today, Grok 3 was in the number two spot. So what I want to show you today, though, is testing this 1 million token context window. Because I've tested it in the past with Google Flash 2.0, and I was less impressed with it. But in this particular case, I just want to give you some examples here. So this is an AIstudio.google.com. My goal was to fill up this entire token context to a million. And I did actually do one where I accidentally went over a million, and then I broke it. So that, that actually wasn't fun. Uh, so you have to be very careful about how much you load in. If I were to take like an entire book and copy it in, I go over a million. The page kind of locks up. It's hard to actually recover from it. I don't think that's a model thing. Actually, I'm, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure it's not a model thing. I think it's the, the system that's managing the context, the website, the server, whatever, that's actually got the problem there. But at 463,872 tokens, I just want to show you how slow it is actually typing this website now. So I'm typing. You can probably hear my keys. Look at that. Now it's coming in slowly. So as you can see, it becomes unusable. Uh, some of my keys that I've typed have not even come in yet. The page is kind of frozen. So I gave up at 463,872 tokens in AIstudio.google. But I will say the very last question that I asked, see, I can't actually type anything in there. But the very last question I asked was for it to rewrite a file that I had given it earlier, the very first file that I had given it. And it did a great job at it. So I have clearly broken the page here, but this is the file. So now it loaded. Uh, so, okay, so I asked it to rewrite a file, the very first file I gave it at the very beginning. And I compared this side by side with the actual code and it kept the context. I was very, very surprised by this because typically I would see, you know, you start even getting to 150,000 or 200,000 context, you start to lose or get confused and, and go off the rails a little bit there. But this did an incredible job. And then prior to this, you know, I can, you could just see, I was just putting code in over and over again. But at this point I asked it to make recommendations on what code changes across all the files I had given it. And at this point, we're probably sitting around 400,000 when I did this. And it went through and named a ton of the different components. So this is all broken up by front end. This is all broken up by back end. It looks like my text just came in at the bottom there. I don't know how long that's been there. And then general recommendations. But going through here, it named a significant amount of the things that I gave it and kept a really good context window of the thing of all the stuff that I've given it. And the response time is not terrible. Uh, I think a lot of it's just the UI just not being responsive. Now I can delete all this pretty quickly. Well, I used to be able to, there we go. Now it went away. So where does that lead us? That leads me over to Rue code because otherwise this video would be very boring. Now with Rue code today, I hammered in this one context window for as long as I could until it started going haywire. So at around 550,000 tokens, I ended up in a spot where it would still code for me, but it wanted to do other things after it finished my code. So the, if I had auto approve on, I'm just gonna show you this last example here. 
Uh, so I said, can you make a new component that you put into chat.ts.view that is an overlay modal, but it only shows on the right side of the screen up to 50% of the width of the image of the page, sorry. And it goes through, it actually creates it to actually get the, the, the file, the right side panel. It creates that and then it updates chat.ts.view. And then now what it does is it based on the content provided earlier, it starts talking about some code I gave it way long ago. It's basically like it's answering a question that I had. So it's here are the fields defined in the UI, UI action rewards junction box or model. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So it was, it did the code and then it told me about a file that had nothing to do with the things that I was doing with this particular component that I was adding. So yeah, that was, that was interesting. But then up right before that, I said, can you tell me how each of the components and controllers you've seen so far interact with one another? And it had a pretty good context because I gave this a crap ton of file. I almost believe I could fit the entire code base in this 1 million tokens, by the way. I was having trouble in the web browser. I got to about that 400,000 and I started going to like smaller files at that point, like put it in there and I was adding like 2000 tokens at that time. I'm like, this is going to take forever. Uh, so I, I actually really like that I could do this with root code because I could just add a bunch of files, put it into context, bump my token context window up. But this did a great job. It broke everything up. It gave me all the interactions that it had in memory. And looking at it, reading through this, it was sufficient because I know how all of this code works in this particular case. And I don't see anything in here that is made up. I'm sure it's not covering every particular interaction because I gave it so much code, but it did a, it does have a good understanding of my code base, which I was very impressed with. So this was around the 350 K mark. And I noted this off to the side, but I said, can you remove all the commented out code and code comments, please? Now I had meant at this point to point it to a file, uh, but I had kicked this off to run it like a dummy. And when I came back a few minutes later, because I was working on another IDE, I noticed that it was going through a bunch of files. So it was going through every file that I had given it before to remove the comments. And it did a great job. It didn't make anything up. It was removing comments properly. It was editing the files. I eventually stopped it. And then this is where I come in and I tell it to, to mock up the chat.ts.view file. So remember later, I just talked about the component I wanted to put in that file. This is when I first created that file. Cause my thinking at this point was it has seen so much of my code at this point that it has to get the format of my code correct. But unfortunately it didn't, it actually put it in a, it didn't match my format. And I ended up having to tell it later on here, can you update it to match the code format and the class setup I have in my other pages? And then it did it, but I was surprised because it has so much context. I feel like Google has probably trained it very heavily on view in a very one particular like format because it keeps wanting to fall back to that. But again, as soon as I told it to make it like my other code, it worked, it worked absolutely great. But I do want to say when it created this file at this point, it started going off the rails because it got down here and it says, what would you like to do next? And I had auto approve on, but watch what it does. It jumps to my currency controller, which this is how I manage multi-currency. And it starts telling me the methods that are in my currency controller, which I thought was very interesting. So I ended up stopping that. Uh, so I was like, okay. At this point I was, I was, I knew that I probably couldn't push it anymore because I could ask questions about my code base, but there is just too much context for me to actually do agentic coding. So I'm just going to ask it a question. I've switched it to ask mode. I still have it set to my API and I'm going to ask it a question about telling me where the bulk API is for creating plans. Now it does get slower. And again, this is a highly throttled API. So I'm assuming that over time this will actually get faster, but remember like we've got a crap ton of context here. 685k and it perfectly finds and returns my bulk plan information. It didn't even read a file. It knew that in memory. It was a few seconds of time. 
I'm incredibly, incredibly impressed with this. So the 36 million tokens I sent up is just mind blowing to me. So depending on the price of this model, I'm going to have to watch that because I don't know how they're going to do caching. I also am skeptical that this calculation is correct in root code because that just seems like an astronomical amount. Absolute astronomical compared to 112.5k down, which doesn't seem right as well. So my takeaway from this is, yes, you can use the 1 million token context window, but you cannot use it with agentic coding because it gets off the rails. Like it starts mixing previous questions you had with the things you're trying to do now. But if you're just asking questions about your code, you could totally load this all into that 1 million token context window and it would answer it perfectly. It's really the tool calling that I think starts going poorly there, which I've tested other models as they get bigger and bigger context windows, and I've never had one perform this well. So much so that, you know, I crashed the website before I had problems with the, the actual model returning the information. I, I'm just amazed by how good this model is. And my only gripe with the entire thing today, and I'm talking, I spent a ton of time coding with this model today, is the fact that it gets my view pages in the incorrect format. Even when I tell it to, to copy a sim, uh, one that I already have, or even when I give it a bunch, bunch of code that it should be able to infer how I want mine set up at that point. But I honestly think that's a training thing because all my other stuff worked great. I was doing some API work, fantastic. It, no problems at all. Editing an existing component, freaking beautiful. This model is just, Beautiful. Very, very impressed. And Google knows it too. Their number one priority, according to Logan Kilpatrick, is to figure out a way to get higher rate limits into the hands of developers. If they could figure out a way to unlock this in cursor, they would honestly take a dent out of Claude. I am not kidding you on that. This model is so good. If the price comes in cheaper than Claude and my tokens out isn't actually 36 million and that's calculated wrong or there's a lot of that being cached which i hope a lot of that's just cached this this model could become the number one model that i use i am not you know some of you may think i'm a claude fanboy i do love claude but i if there's a better better model i will use it i am not a claude fanboy i am a i will pick the tool that does the best job for me and this model is phenomenal I can't even I can't even state enough like how much Google has turned it around from a few months ago to now. And if they get this right to where cursor is unlocked, where everyone that has cursor can start using this model, and that is going to put Google in a just a dominant spot. I saw this post by McKay Wrigley, and it's always tough for me when someone says easily the best, because I think everything's subjective. But I think there is a strong argument that this could be the new king of programming. I have one use case that is a little annoying, but otherwise today I generated hundreds of lines of code, if not even more than that with this model, and it nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. It's just so good. And then you saw what I did with that 1 million token context limit. No other model could do that on the market, not to the degree that I showed you. And on top of this, this model might be the best one shot programming model on the market right now, even comparable to Claude 3.7. So easily the best model. I think there's an argument that that could be a true statement, but what we're going to have to see is the price because the price is going to matter a lot for this. And the other thing is going to be the compute capacity. So I will close out with this. So this was posted by Logan Kilpatrick, where he said the Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental on LiveBench, and he had like a mind-blown emoji. And I'm blown away too by these scores, to be honest with you. 85.87 compared to 74.54 with Claw 3.7 Sonnet Thinking. This was my original, this is the model that I've used the most over the last probably couple weeks. Today, I only use Gemini 2.5 Pro. That was the model I purely used all day. My cost today was zero. That's not going to last forever. This experimental model, 
I am loving it while it lasts. Anyway, these benchmarks are insane. They win in almost every category. The global average of being 82. If you look at the next highest one being 76, that is in insanely crazy. And I am not a benchmark believer. I don't think these always equate to real world uses, but Gemini 2.5 Pro on the coding side, I do think it really has put a massive dent in Claw 3.7. All right, I think that about wraps up for today. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Google 2.5 Pro. And if this video has been helpful to you at all, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more content like this. And if you want to talk more about Google 2.5 Pro, jump into my Discord. We're well over 100 members now. Love the people that we have in there right now. It's a really cool group of people with very different perspectives. And it's turning out to be a, just a fun place for me to hang out when I have time. So appreciate all of you that are in there. Uh, the conversations I have, the way you get me to think about things, just fantastic. But anyway, until next time, everyone.